Welcome back to United in His Purpose. This is a ministry of Ken Bostrom Ministries, where my husband and I have 48 years. Teach the found and preach the word. They're the mandate to reach the lost, teach the found, and preach the word. And one thing uh, I want to introduce you to Susanna Lee. Uh, and her and her husband pastor in Galveston, Texas, uh, the Antioch Galveston Church. And so I'm so proud of everything that you're doing. She's a wonderful wife and a mother of uh, four and just doing incredible things, the work of the ministry. Uh, before I turn it over to Susanna to, for her to share with you, I want to tell you how we met uh, at Church of the Living God in Galveston, Texas. Um, she gave her life to the Lord and she, I think you cried more than anybody I've ever seen cry. I mean, she <laughs> just cried and cried. She just, she just absolutely was radically saved. And uh, the next Sunday, she got up to, uh, to, to give her testimony of what happened to her when she got born again the week before. And, and when she stepped down from the stage, Holy Spirit spoke to me very strongly and said, I am holding you responsible for her. And uh, it actually shook me, and I took that very seriously. I knew that this, uh, that this young woman had a call of God upon her life, and I needed to, to help her like Tim, uh, Paul did with Timothy. And so what we did for how many years? It three years? It seemed like three years. Yeah, it, it, it was so. a long time. Yeah. I had this big dining room table in, a, in the apartment where we lived in Galveston, and I'd put down all the books, and Susie was a, a school teacher, so she, she loved to study and she loved to read, and, and so we, uh, we put down and, and uh, just taught her the Bible, uh, just allowed her to ask any question that she had been thinking about, something you didn't understand about yeah. the Bible. And we just, we just did that for, two, uh, for three years. Yeah. And I remember when you, when you married your husband, he was a youth pastor at that time, and um, they didn't kiss until the, the preacher said, I do, yeah. and that, that <laughs> is not done very often, and I honor you for that. But uh, when, when he said, I do, I heard that very same voice say, your assignment is over. Wow. And so, because... I don't think I heard that part. You didn't awesome. hear that part? Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah, and so <laughs> my mentoring was done. Yeah. But I'm still mama. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, tell me about your church and uh, the young people that you're mentoring. Because the Word of God doesn't say go out and get people saved. It says make disciples. Amen. And I think that's a problem yeah. with yeah. a lot of people is they get saved and they don't change. They right. have to change and they have to be under some kind of authority. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think that like I think that one of the things that I share with a lot of young women and um, women that are, you know, coming to know the Lord is that it's so vital to have a disciple, like yeah. someone to disciple you, someone to mentor you, uh, someone to really walk with you. Like discipleship is really believers joining together to grow in their faith and really being accountable to somebody, you know, yeah. um, it's it's like my kids, you know, if if I just had my children and I never mothered them and never really helped them, they would not really be successful. And I feel like in the same light, like in the church, like um, we have to really take in the new babes in Christ and really mentor them, disciple them, and really encourage them. Really, the, the biggest thing in, in this discipleship is teaching people to obey the gospel, teaching people to yeah. obey Jesus. Yeah. And so that's where I feel like it started with me. And um, I share our, our story all the time and how you took me in and, uh, and just loved me and encouraged me and had those, you know, face to face. I just believe like discipleship is life on life. Yeah. It's really having that encounter with God through a person speaking life to you. And I think it's it radically changed my life. And so I've, I believe that the fruitfulness that, that I'm seeing and experiencing in my life is because of what you did with me and you invested in me. I mean, we're called to invest in people. That's we what are. Jesus has called us to do. It's our purpose. I'll read, um, I wrote a couple of notes down on Acts chapter two. It says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship and sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper. Uh, and prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared their money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. 
all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. And I really feel like that's exactly what Jesus is calling us to, is like really having life on life. It's not a, just about a Sunday morning exactly. and gathering. Because you can't really, like as pastors, we, you know, we might have you know, close to like 100, 125 people in the church. You can't really fellowship with them all. You have to find places of like um, just smaller groups, smaller gatherings, and then even to the one-to-one -one or one-to-two. I know that's what you did with us, and you shared your life with us. And the experiences that we got out of it were just eternal. That they, they really were impactful. Um, you know, there's so, there's so much encouragement that happens in discipleship mm -hmm. um, that is very hard to to share unless someone actually gets in, in, in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, you know, I felt like when you discipled me, um, you were super loving, but at the same time, you were super stern. You I know, was when there was tough. times, yeah, when there was times <laughs> that I was having to face, like, a decision that Jesus would ask me to do, you were just like, you have to do what Jesus says, you know, and you didn't give me any, like, flack with that, and so mm -hmm. you taught me how to obey Jesus. You taught mm -hmm. me how to obey the word and what Jesus was calling me to do, and I think sometimes we kind of forget about that. We forget that we have to teach, we have to disciple in that manner is, you know, we're not making disciples out of who we are. Like, I don't want to make a disciple out of Susie. That, that's yeah. really bad. Yeah. Um, you're not making a disciple out of Mary. You're making a disciple out of Jesus. You're, yes. you know, we're, we're showing people yeah. the life of Jesus and we're, we're you know, really um, empowering people to hear Jesus' voice mm -hmm. and obey it, mm -hmm. you know? And so I know that that's, that's, that's what I was taught mm -hmm. by you. And I just loved how you were like relentless with it. You know, you never stopped. Um, as, as busy as you were, you still, you know, really invested in me in such great lengths, you know, and, and that was so powerful. It was very powerful. Yeah. You know, there, there's an anointing that, uh, to be real. Yeah. You know, and, and if you can be real with others, and that's what, you know, because there's one thing about seeing somebody behind a podium yeah. or on TV or something yeah. like that, but when, when you're real and when you can just... Um, it's really an act of humility to just kind of submit yourself to each yeah, other. Absolutely. I'm submitting every single one of my failures to you yeah. so that you can learn absolutely. so that you don't have to go through those failures. Yeah. And um, yeah. there were, I remember a specific time um, that you said something wrong to the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> that happened and, many a time. And I said, I said uh, you're going to have to be a sacrifice on this one. Yeah. Yeah, you're just going to have to be a living sacrifice, and so there's tough times. Yeah. But you know, um, it's uh, I was talking to somebody about uh, Israel on the Jewish calendar. They have four New Years, mm -hmm. and there's one uh, one New Year we just had, and it was with a super blue blood moon. It was right. the same day, and uh, it, it's a New Year of the trees. And each wow. one of us are like trees, like yeah. a, you know, That's and good. so that we're supposed to bear fruit. Yeah. And a fruit is to give out for other people yeah. to eat, you know. That's true. And um, so they're supposed to eat our peace and our joy and our love and different things yeah. like that. Um, but the new year of the, of the trees, for the first three years, nobody can eat your fruit. Wow. Nobody can eat your fruit. The fourth that, year, the, all the fruit goes to the Lord. To the to the temple, the fifth year. By the fifth year, you can you can go doing work in the ministry. Wow. And so everybody needs to just kind of submit themselves. You know, a lot yeah. of people they get saved, and I'm sure you've had people come into your church and they're like, "Wow, well, we can use yeah. them." Yeah. And you try to use them too fast. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah, I know that there's, um, you know, as as you walk with God, you're just growing in your relationship with Him and learning how to lead. You know, there's always those those ebbs and flows of how Jesus is teaching you um, how to walk in his yeah. way and his will. And, and, and that's one of the things um, that I really try to make sure that people understand, like vulnerability in the body of Christ is a must. Like humility, yeah. vulnerability, and honor yeah. are like super high in the kingdom. Yeah. And so if we really want to radically be fruitful and multiply, and we, which is what Genesis chapter one, verse 26 talks about. Like that's the purpose is that we would multiply his image. Yeah. Not our image, but his image. But it, you, we, we must be vulnerable. Like we have to put like our pearls out on the table and allow yeah. someone to really 
lead and guide us in that, mm -hmm. you know, obviously with the word of God and with prayer. Um, you know, I always encourage ladies like that have a desire for discipleship, but really aren't committed to really saying the full yes. You know, they're not really fully surrendering. I had to learn that really early on because I was just ready to disciple everybody and yeah, anybody. And, and it was a struggle because yeah. you can't, if someone is more, if, mm -hmm. if you're more hungry for someone than they are themselves, then that's really not a place yeah. like, you know, of discipleship because they have to be hungry. And I know when I came into knowing Christ, like I didn't really know anything at all, but I was so hungry to find the truth. You were so you teachable. Know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to know. I yeah. wanted to know. And so, you know, I think that as a body of Christ, we're called to disciple. James um, 5.16 says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has a great power and, pro and produces wonderful results. And I feel like, you know, when I would sit with you and I would confess my sins and I would confess the things that I was going through, I wasn't looking for forgiveness because Jesus gives us that. Thank God for that. Um, but you offered prayer and you offered, you know, like... You gave me wisdom. You'd say, what would Jesus do on this? What, what does the word of God say on this situation? And that's really what's, that's our mandate is we're called to, to um, impact people's lives, not by telling them what to do, but by encouraging them to go into the word, to seek and, and pray mm -hmm. and ask the Lord, Jesus, what are you saying about this yes. situation? You yeah. know, why do I feel this way? Or why am I feeling? And then mm -hmm. allow them to encounter Jesus in a way. And then they won't, they will never be the same again. Absolutely. You know, you can't, yeah. you can't encounter somebody, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus for somebody else. Yeah. They have yeah. to be hungry. And so a disciple is definitely one who's hungry. Yeah. You, that's how you seek them out. We always say, um, look for people of peace. Mm -hmm. Um, People that are so hungry. If and that that term, people of peace, is is kind of like you know when you're going around and evangelizing or ministering to people in different forums, you know, you will find those who are hungry. Mm -hmm. You know who needs to, who yeah. really is saying, yeah. I want a fork, I want a knife, yeah. I want a spoon, I want to have it all. Let yeah. me sit at your table and I'm ready yeah. to eat. Those are the kind of people that Jesus is calling us to. Yeah. Yeah. Her and her husband are soul winners. I mean, they love to get see people saved. I remember <laughs> you talking about when you were in your honeymoon. Yes. And, and you're on a bus and you're you're preaching. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a funny uh, <laughs> funny scenario. My husband and I we went on our honeymoon and um, we just thought, you know what? You know, even though we're on our honeymoon. We're still, we're still Christians. We still love Jesus, and Jesus is still speaking to us. So, yeah. of course, we would get on every bus, and he would preach the gospel, and, and I would interpret it in Spanish. And, oh, gosh, we had some really radical things that people didn't like, of course, but that's okay. We're not called to be um, liked by everybody and, yeah. and understood, but we are called to obey Jesus. And so, yeah, we, we definitely would do that. That was fun. Yeah. We had some fun experiences. <laughs> Yeah. And, you, and you've done mission trips. And yeah, mission trips. And, you know, we would go to Reynosa, Mexico as youth pastors, take teenagers out on, you know, out to orphanages and um, on the mission field, uh, gone to the Dominican Republic and helped with um, a group there that, you know, works with Haitians and things like that. Like God is really just moving. He's, yes. he's really radically trying, you know, I think Jesus wants to see his church move in a way um, where it's simplified, where our life, wherever we're at, whether we're a school teacher, whether we're at home with children, or whether we are a nurse or a doctor, or whatever it is that we're called, whatever sphere of influence that we're called to, like we're still called to win the lost. We're yeah. still called to share the gospel. Yeah. Um, and Jesus honors that. And he's, yeah. he's really calling us to a new, a new level of, um, of reaching out, you yes. know? Amen. Yeah, and discipleship is huge it's it's a huge key in it amen yeah uh, i i was um you had uh your all nations training school mm -hmm. on sunday yeah. nights and and i was honored to come over and and teach one of those classes and i sat back and i watched as they had the time of sharing i think it was yeah where where you know the the students they would like one-on-one -on -one, how are you doing yes how often does a pastor yeah come and sit down with you and look you in the eye and say, how are you doing? Right. How was your week? Right. Yeah. And it wasn't quick. I mean, it was, you spent a lot of time yeah. just sharing, letting them share their heart. Yeah. 
and not just pounding, 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 teaching into them. Yeah. You were you were opening up your hearts, yeah. and you were being vulnerable, and you were you were helping to share their dream and yeah. and shape their future. Yeah, because we're all called to to this level, and but what's what's really hard for people to see is that we all have challenges. We face we have mm -hmm. str struggles and challenges that that really someone really if they could pastor people through it, if they could mm -hmm. be loved through it and encouraged. You know, whether you've been saved for like two months, two years, or 20, we're all called to discipleship. We're mm -hmm. all called to be accountable to somebody. You know, I always share with a lot of the ladies, and, and it's kind of like a, um, it's kind of like a saying in our church is that zero secrets equals trust. And so if you can be vulnerable before people and say, hey, this is what I'm really struggling with, you know, you can really make it, you know. We have so many people that, um, you know, or not so many, but there's just, you know, a handful of people that can, that will fall in areas of weakness um, that are in the realm of, you know, of, of influence, mm -hmm. you know, pastors and ministers that, yes. that fall in those areas because they don't have someone that they can be accountable to. They're not exposing themselves and their weaknesses so that somebody can be, can hold them accountable to it. Um, I know some of our men at our church, like, they have this program on their on their computer, and if they look at things that are off, it notifies another pastor or another you wow. know friend, and it keeps them accountable on the computers. That's good. Yeah, and so these levels of accountability are such a need today because we have so much access to so many things that Me are. Too. It's just it's just out there, you know, mm -hmm. that can really trap ministers, and so. Mm -hmm. Through the school, we really felt like, you know, we want to teach people, be so vulnerable, be transparent, and if you are, you could be so successful at what God is calling you to do. Mm -hmm. If not, you could be caught in traps mm -hmm. that, you know, that dishonor the body of Christ, dishonor yeah. Christ and what he's done, you know, and it really is, um, is one of those things that it, it takes humility. It takes yeah. humility to be able to say, hey, here's my struggle. If we say we don't have struggle, we're just lying. Yeah, because we exactly. all struggle with something, but mm -hmm. we have to be able to share it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And that's not a lack of faith either. No. That, and you have to be a little bit careful about who you're sharing. You don't sure. share it on on Facebook. No. Or social no, media. No, please don't. No. <laughs> you have to learn how to share your pearls. That's how I say. Yeah. These are sweet pearls that you are, if I'm going to share my struggles, I know I'm going to call you or another minister, uh, pastor that understands mm -hmm. the, um, the hardships. Yeah. And so you definitely want to find people that will protect your pearls yeah. because they're pearls. Yeah. And that, that, yeah, so don't just share them everywhere. I always say, please don't share but them on Facebook. You, you have, she has a fabulous husband that she can share everything yes. with. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, and, and the thing I love about uh, Susie and Robert uh, Lee is the joy. <laughs> they They are enjoying the journey. Yes. It's fun. I mean, when, when you see him, Robert always has this huge smile on his face. He is loving yeah. every minute of ministry. Yeah. And there's so many ministers that just want to quit and give yeah. up because it's struggling and stuff. But you know what? They are enjoying it. Yeah, we are. I mean, it's, I, I, I would admit there's always like, you know, things that are going on. There's always struggles. You know, we lost our, um, I lost my mother-in-law um, yeah. on, on Mother's Day last year. And I think that was the most tragic time of our lives where we just, we had to keep seeking the face of Jesus and knowing she's in an awesome place, knowing mm -hmm. she's in before the Lord, but it's still a struggle. It's still a hardship. And we, we learn how to respond and, um, and the church allowed us to really mourn. Mm -hmm. I still feel like there's still times of mourning. Oh, there'd um, be waves. Yeah, there's waves mm -hmm. of it. Um, but in the midst of it all, people are girding us up. They're like, mm -hmm loving us, encouraging us, because, you know, as lead pastors of the church, we always really try to encourage people like, we're not, it's not like this pyramid thing where we're up here with God and you're down here with yeah. God. No, we're Don't all. Don't bother me. Yeah, we're you know, all on the same place. One thing I have a problem with is pastors that think that their sheep have to protect the shepherd. Yeah. Yeah, we're, you know, we're called to honor. We're called yeah. to be people of honor. You're with your people. Yeah, and so I, I know I know we saw that such a beautiful place in the body of Christ where people just 
came alongside of us when we were going through that time of her going through chemo, of Sandy going through chemo and her struggle, and it just really, you know, was a burden <coughs> to us in our hearts because she was so close to our family. I mean, she was at our house every day, and she's a well, great grandmother. She was grandmother, such a part of your ministry, Part too. of the ministry, jail ministry, all that good stuff that we did together, and it's just, she's so missed. But, so yeah, yeah there's... Um, you know, we, ha we are enjoying the journey. It hasn't been easy. Mm -hmm. It has been um, learning how to trust Jesus in even those places that mm -hmm. um, don't make sense. Because yeah. Jesus didn't call us to understand it all. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a faith move, you know? Right. So everything we've done when we planted our church in Galveston, it was a faith move. Um, just all that Jesus is calling us to do, even discipleship. It's, it's all mm -hmm. faith. It's all yeah. believing that these that the people we're investing in and pouring into, that they will learn how to obey Jesus mm -hmm. and they will be lovers of Jesus and be fruitful, yeah. you know? You know, being on Galveston Island, Texas, you have the, uh, a huge baptismal. Yeah, <laughs> baptismal. I love that part. Yes. The Gulf of Mexico, they just yeah. go down and, and uh, just go have beach. a good time on the beach yeah. and, and uh, baptize people. Yeah. And, and it's not behind closed doors. Yeah. It's for all the world to see. Yeah, there's a, we had a, last summer, we had a scenario where we were taking um, a, a two people out to get baptized at the beach. And uh, it was right there by Walmart. And um, we went out there and just began to worship before we went out and yes. pray, uh, out and baptized and just prayed together and, and really just made sure, like, all the church comes out. It's really awesome. It's real beautiful. And and while we were baptized, while Robert was baptizing this couple, there was another couple with their grandchild that was standing to the side and just in tears. And after the baptism was done, they just come over and they're like, can we be baptized? Wow. And we just, we were ministered to on the street and, um, and, and we have not been baptized and we haven't been able to find a church. And so, of course, Robert's like, yes, you know, and do you believe <laughs> that Jesus is Lord and Savior? Do you believe it? You know, he's going through the whole yes, thing and making yeah. sure that they understand what this means. And they were all baptized, all three of them, the grandfather, the grandmother, and the granddaughter. Wow. And we were just at all. So yeah. it is definitely a display of like, God's yeah. glory and God's goodness when people are surrendering and like just yeah. saying yes, yes to You're Jesus. You're not afraid to take the church outside the walls. Nope, nope, no. not at all. I know no. they, uh, Galveston uh, has Mardi Gras and there, it's just a lot of people that yeah. you can talk yeah. to and share with at Mardi Gras. Yeah, it's an open door to... Just be to, Jesus, be that yeah. light, be that yeah. salt. It's an open door to being able to minister and even on a weekend basis. Galveston is a tourist city. It's yeah. got so yeah. many nationalities that come through with the port and uh, the cruise ships and stuff. So it's really an opportunity to to really go out and love on people. And our, you know, a lot of our college groups will love to go out and minister mm -hmm. and encourage people to just share Jesus. Amen. Find people of peace. You know, Amen. that's really what we're called to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, so you have uh, smaller groups too that meet during the week. Yeah. That, you know, cause you, you just need to fellowship with each other. You know, if yeah. you just go to church on Sunday, walk in uh, when church has started and walk off before it's done. I mean, yeah. you really don't get connected. Right. And I, I remember when um, one of our friends, Pam, when she was going through a sickness and had to be in the hospital and stuff, I said, what do people do yeah. that don't have uh, family. Groups, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, if they don't have a family, at least they got a church family. Correct. You, yeah. you need each other. Yes. We need each other. Yes, we do. I mean, it, it's yeah. wonderful that we can turn on TV and watch church, right. but right. We, we have to be pe people are a purpose. Yeah, yeah we are, we're called to replicate what Jesus is doing in that life of obedience and surrender. Mm -hmm. And you can't figure that out unless you live life on life with people. So life groups are really a key um, a key for, for the Lord to use because what we desire is for each life group to have a pastor, to yeah. pastor that group because we can't pastor a lot of people. Yeah. We, can, we, we, are pa we are called, Robert and I are called to pastor our leaders and then they are yes. called to pastor their groups. And so we're called to replicate our life of obedience, but people have to see it. How is it lived out? How is this really happening? Yeah. And it happens within small groups and smaller settings. And so um, that's what Jesus is called to. I want to um, close out with this scripture yes. um, that uh, 
2 Timothy 2.2, which is our Paul Timothy initiative that we all believe and what you and I got to experience, what I got to experience with you when you took me on. It says, um, so 2 Timothy 2.2 says, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And so yes. that's what we're called to do is we're, we're called to teach others what yeah. Jesus has taught us Amen. through that life of discipleship. So Amen. it's, um, Amen. you know, I'll say that, um, maybe you're not a pastor, maybe um, you're not a teacher and have formal training, but you do have something. You do have something to offer the body of Christ. Um, Jesus is doing a great work in you and you do have a lot to offer. And so maybe just finding that one person that Jesus is pointing out to you, that person of peace that's hungry and just investing in them. I want you to pray with them. A lot of people have, uh, have been uh, exposed to the shepherding movement where it was commanded submission, commanded law and it was just bondage. And uh, I want you to pray with the people, and there's a, you know, this goes all over the world, so uh, also pray for people in Spanish too, if you wouldn't mind. And um, just, you're just gonna take the last couple of minutes and, and just, just encourage them to find somebody to be a disciple. Ask the Lord to, to bring some, uh, you, you, you said one time, everybody needs a Paul, and everybody needs a Timothy. So encourage them. Well, I just want to tell you, Susie, how proud I am of you and Robert and the work that you're doing. He's an awesome wife and mother, uh, mentor, uh, disciple. She, she's just got them all wrapped up into one. So I, we just encourage you to be a mentor. And, or maybe you're at a point where you need to be discipled. Uh, just reach out. Jesus has a plan for you. Amen. God bless you.